Someone mentioned in the comment section that I'm biased towards Elon and his companies. Well, first of all, I am. I love what he's doing right now, disrupting many industries, changing people's lives, and possibly shifting the course of our future. Most importantly, he is pro-innovation, so am I. But that's not why I advocate and support Tesla, SpaceX, or OpenAI. I support them because not only I believe in its vision for the future, the world and most of the scientists agree with that future too. So in this video, I'm going to simply present to you guys what scientists and researchers are saying about Tesla in all of its related industries. The industries Tesla is transforming are the electric vehicles industry, solar power industry, battery industry, as well as the autonomous driving industry. We shall get to them one by one. I want to start with the battery industry because it impacts both the EV industry as well as the solar power industry. First of all, it seems to be evident that the cost of battery will continue to go down in the next decades. According to Wood and Lee in their paper, Prospects for Reducing Processing Cost of Lithium-Ion Battery, they laid out three reasons why the cost of battery has dropped and is continuing to go down in the future. First is that the cost for eliminating toxic is going down. One of the most serious implications of driving an electric vehicle is that the common lithium cobalt aluminum battery we see in every Tesla are produced along with toxic solvent that is hard to handle. Hence, handling this part of the production costs a lot of money. So, reducing the toxicity is a big part of the cost. I don't want to go into the specifics of reducing cost of battery, but the moral of the paper is that the cost of battery can be reduced by nearly 30% to around $300 per kilowatt hour. One thing to note is that this paper was published in 2014, and now in 2017, we have already reached the $300 per kilowatt hour mark. In fact, with the new Gigafactory and the economies of skills, Tesla has already achieved 77% reduction in battery pack cost in the past six years. Recent studies show that from 2010 to 2016, the cost of battery per kilowatt hour is dropped from $1,000 to currently $227 per kilowatt hour. In 2017, Elon also hinted to lower the battery price to around $125 per kilowatt hour. This is a big deal. Let me explain. In 2010, if you were to produce an electric car with 85 kilowatt hour battery like the standard one equipped in Tesla Model 3, it would cost around 85 times 1000 equals to $85,000 just for the battery. This is why Tesla Roadster was so expensive and a $40,000 Tesla Model 3 was simply not possible in 2010. But now in 2017, with the cost lowered to around $200 per kilowatt hour, the battery alone cost 85 times 200, which gives $17,000, hence making a $40,000 Tesla possible. And with the Gigafactory reducing the cost further to $125 per kilowatt hour, the cost of battery drops to 85 times 125, which gives to around $10,000. Hence, this would help make an even more popular mass market car than Tesla Model 3. Furthermore, according to a research done by the Bloomberg New Energy Finance, this price is dropping to $73 in the year 2030. This is a big deal. Cost factor would drop the price of EVs to a competitive range against gasoline cars. This also makes solar energy so much more affordable. So let me now touch on these two points. Because of the drastic drop in the battery price, EVs have entered the $30,000 automobile mass market. However, that's not it. Governments of the biggest nations are also focusing more and more on curbing transportation pollutions by supporting EVs. Starting with the United States, the EV sales have grown an average of 32% from 2012 to 2016 and 45% over the year ending June 2017, thanks to $75,000 tax credit by the United States government. Furthermore, according to Energy Innovations Research, Energy Policy Simulator projects 65% of the car sales in the US will be EVs in the year 2050. Then we have come to China. China has stricter and stronger stance towards EV adoptions. It has proposed a quota system where EV will make up 8% of each automaker's vehicle production in the next year, 10% in 2019 and 12% in 2020. Automakers that fail to meet their target could buy credits from competitors that have a surplus. The European Commission also pledged 42 million euro to back the green e-motion project that aims to introduce EVs to the mass market. 
Individual countries in the region also has their own initiatives. For example, just this June, Britain has pledged to ban new diesel and gas cars by the year 2040. So putting everything together, EVs will be the way of the future too. There is no way around it. Thirdly, I want to talk about solar power. The case for solar power is almost identical compared to the previous two. The price of solar is dropping to the extent that it could compete with the traditional ways of energy generation. Hence, it is almost definitely the ways of the future. Again, this is a story of technological innovation and change. The cost of solar power has dropped 300 times. The solar installation doubled every two years since the year 2000. If this trend continues, we will have solar energy powering our entire world by 2030. These numbers came from this guy, not me, Tony Seba. And here are his own words. It's about 1%, 1.5%. Now, if it keeps doubling, and it's doubling every two years, how long, how many years, until solar is 100% of the world's uh, generation of energy? Let's do the numbers. So 1.5%, let's double it every two, two years. 3%, one doubling, 6, 12%, 24, 48, 96. Six doublings. Say I'm wrong by a couple of years, seven doublings, that is 14 years. So essentially by 2030 or so, solar, if it keeps growing like this, and remember S-curves, right, exponential, it's gonna be 100% of the world's energy generation. He has worked on solar energy research for his entire life, and this is the conclusion he reached. So don't take my word for it, take his. I'll link his 40 minutes presentation in his book, Clean Disruption, down below for those who are interested. I've read the book, it's pretty good. Lastly, I want to talk about autonomous driving. The cost of the fundamental technologies of autonomous driving has dropped in the past years. For example, one of the most important pieces of technology that enables autonomous driving is the LiDAR that scans the surroundings of your car. Its price has dropped more than 90% in the last decade. The cost of a 3D LiDAR sensor used to be $75,000 in 2000s, and now, in 2017, its price has dropped to $7,500. So that's a tenfold decrease. Furthermore, the same company that provides LiDAR for Google's self-driving car Waymo claimed to have designed 3D LiDAR sensor that cost $50 to make. All of these are caused by technological breakthroughs in the past decade and will in turn pave the way for a fully automated future. There are five levels of full automation and we are currently at level two. However, most automakers claim to be able to reach level four automation by the year 2020. If you don't know, this basically means full automation. Here's a chart of what each level means. If you're interested, pause the video and check them out. So now you might want to ask, Lei, that sounds great, but how would this change your lives? I think autonomous driving is going to change our lives in the most fundamental way. When it happens, a lot of idle resources would be freed up. The same car that sends you to your work can fetch someone from the supermarket afterwards. Finishing its current task, it can straight away embark on the next one. This means no more cars sitting in the garage collecting dust and eventually lead to the demise of individual ownership of cars. According to the same book by Tony Seba, because of autonomous driving, the volume of the cars on the road will decrease by 80% in the next two decades and basically change our cities forever. No more headaches of looking for parking spaces, no more traffic jams, and possibly no more car accidents. In conclusion, I hope I have expressed my feelings for Tesla loud and clear in this video. It's not that I'm biased towards it, it's really that Tesla is investing in the technologies of the future. In the four major areas of Tesla's current core competence, the EV industry, the solar power industry, the battery industry, and the autonomous driving industry, Tesla is undoubtedly one of the market leaders. This is why Tesla stock looks like this in the past seven years since its IPO. And I can even argue that Uber is what it is because it's investment in autonomous driving. If Uber can be a multi-billion dollar company simply because of its investment in one of the four industries, it is hard to measure how Tesla would do in the future, when the future I described becomes reality. Thanks for watching guys, again check out Tony Saber's video presentation and his book Clean Disruption in the description section below. This guy spent his entire life on researching these topics I just talked about, and he has a very good track record predicting the future of clean energy. So that's it for today, I'm Lei, see you in the next video, peace.